Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Tumians. I'm the zoning administrator. I'd like to welcome you to this morning's zoning administrator meeting. Calling the meeting to order. The first um, item on the agenda is approval of minutes for the July 18th, uh, 2024 meeting. Um, there are no changes. Uh, so the minutes for the July 18th are approved as submitted. Okay. Now we come to the public comments um, portion. Um, we are taking public comments for non-agenda matters. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. Um, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close <laughs> the public comment and move on to uh, the zoning administrator uh, statement of purpose. Excuse me, I'm just going to pipe in yes. uh, that we technically do need to take public comment on the minutes before we approve. Oh, so if you want to see if there was public comment and if there was, then okay. we can sort of reconsider your action on that. If there's no public comment, then you can just sort of confirm okay. that the action stands. Thank you. Um, so move, um, reversing back to um, item two on the agenda, approval of minutes. Are there any uh, public comments on the minutes for the July 18th meeting? Seeing none, I will approve um, the July 18th minutes um, as approved or um, as submitted. Going back to item 4.1, um, the statement of purpose, the zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission, or city council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the next business day. Since there are um, no consent items, we'll move on to the first uh, scheduled item, which is item 6.1, public hearing revocation of SVR 24-060. Um, the zoning administrator was made aware that this item will be continued to a date certain of August 29th. There'll be a special ZA meeting held at 10.30 a.m. And um, did you have anything else? Yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, this Zoning Administrator Tumians, um, Jessica Jones, Deputy Director of Planning. Uh, so uh, we did receive a request for a public hearing, sorry, a, uh, a request for a continuance of this item from the property owner uh, late last night. Uh, they have requested that the item be continued to a date certain of uh, August 29th um, at 1030 in the morning. Uh, so same, same day of the week and time um, in this room. Um, they are not able to attend today's meeting as they are out of town. Um, so they have agreed to that continuance date. Um, and I did want to state for the record, um, we had a number of comments that were received from property owners um, around the area um, uh, with uh, concerns about the property and uh, in support of revocation. Um, and they were very concerned about the continuance of this. And so I just want to state for the record, we did have a number of property owners who had uh, uh, rescheduled vacations and other um, personal things uh, to be here today. And so they were not pleased with that. So I just want to stick with the record. Thank you. Do we have to take public comment on the continuance? Yes. I believe we do. Okay, yes. Um, is there anyone in the uh, audience who would wish to make um, a public comment on the continuance of uh, SVR 24-060? Seeing none, I will close the public comment and uh, this item will be continued to a date certain of August 29th at 10.30 a.m. Um, at this location, right? Yes. yes, okay. Moving on. This is item 6.2. It's a landmark alteration for the Somerville garage and remodel at 522 Orchard Street, file number LMA. 23-006. Planner Islo will be presenting. Thanks, the zoning administrator to me. Um, share my screen.
The project before you today is a minor landmark alteration for the Somerville Garage and Remodel located at 522 Orchard Street. The proposal is to expand the garage to include an unconditioned space to the rear and a loft above, and also add a new bathroom and a covered patio to the rear of the existing home. Here is a neighborhood context map, so you can see the location. Um, the home is located in the Cherry Street Preservation District. And here is an aerial view of the site. Um, you can see the existing garage right down here. The general plan land use designation is low density residential and the zoning is R16H. Here's a site plan, um, the shaded areas there, you can see where the extensions will take place. Um, the covered patio will be just over here um, and the shop to the rear of the garage with the loft above. Here's some photos of the existing property. And here are elevations of what is proposed. These are the elevations from the sides as well. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA um, as it involves the remodel and expansion of a small structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review. Um, at the time of making this presentation, we had not received any public comment. Uh, since then, I did receive an email from a neighbor who was concerned about um, potentially losing the tree that is here, um, over here at the front. Um, they were wondering if uh, there would be a change in the driveway access with the new garage, um, but there will not be any changes to the, to the driveway access. Um, it will remain the same, so the oak tree will not be um, touched in any way. Staff analysis has concluded that findings can be met. Um, a lot of the original materials are being used, such as the trim for the wood trim for the windows. Um, stucco is a very common uh, material used in this neighborhood. Um, the project also includes um, reduced setbacks, and there are findings for reduced setbacks in historic districts that can be made as well. Therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor landmark alteration to allow the Somerville Garage and Remodel Project at 522 Orchard Street. And for any questions or comments, uh, there is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Bisla. Um, would the applicant like to make any comments or uh, add to the presentation? Yeah, at all. Dave Foreman with the architect, Michelle Wa from my office. She basically worked with the minor project. Um, we're not changing the tree on the driveway. Mm -hmm. We actually it's reoriented the garage or to make it more conducive to be able to drive into the garage. So we're not touching the driveway or the tree at the front of the property. Yeah. At this point, we don't have any other comments or issues. Um, at this point, we're really happy to answer any questions that staff might have or yes. staff might have. So yes, I have some questions regarding uh, the proposed dormers um, on the second floor. Um, I looked at some um, different Tudor style um, Tudor styles that have dormers, and I noticed that um, most Tudors will have um, either gabled dormers, and in some some instances they have shed roof dormers. But in this case, the dormers stick out quite a bit, and they don't really convey the Tudor style of the main house. And I was wondering if there was any way to any design changes that could be made to modify the dormer so they're more fitting with the Tudor style? Well, um, in all fairness, if you tour the neighborhood, there are at least a half dozen homes that have similar dormers. Some are tall like that, some are short. Um, 
some of the Victorian style or the or the Tudor style that's in neighbors. Some have really short dormers that have basically an eyebrow window. Some are actually taller. So it's it's not indicatively uncommon in the neighborhood to have those type of dormers. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue with changing the dormer design, of course, if we were to do a traditional gable dormer, it's going to be taller than the main roof structure of the building, of the actual garage itself. Okay. Um, so this is a way to keep our height to the limit of the ridge of the garage without projecting up another dominant roof above that line. Okay. Um, and, and quite honestly, the dormers are offset from each other, so there would be no way to connect them. Mm -hmm. so we would have two projections above the ridge line if it was turned into a dormer type roof. Okay. And the maximum height, uh, the current max height of the, to the pit, the peak of the roof, roof of the garage is right at 16? Uh, if you were to raise the floor plate, would that help you make the dormers a little less bulky? If we were to raise the lower garage plate from nine feet to something taller than nine feet. Or just the overall height of the garage. Maybe not the floor plate, but the, I'm just thinking of ways that we could. Um, Seems like we can make it more dominant. Garage would be taller and it's a The garage is one and a half feet. Okay. Yeah. Total. Yeah. That the is, whole, the whole structure. We weren't held to a 16 foot height limit. Okay, got it. Part of it's the historic. Okay. It's too okay. I, mean, to, I mean, to me, it just, it feel, the dormers feel a little off, off balance, um, a little too bulky, and don't convey the Tudor style. So that's my concern. I was wondering if you were... Um, Willing to consider alternative designs for the dormers? So, what I would propose if to bring down the height of the dormers, we still have to do it. Yeah, for yes, okay. But we certainly could consider raising the roof structure up. Okay. By as much as two feet, no more than two feet. Okay. Vertically, which would, if if you look at those elevations, that would bring that that roof line right up just below the bottom of the windows. It effectively gives me more height inside the uh, second store. The attic. By doing that. Because uh, we're going to keep the floor line the same. There's no reason to have an 11 foot high ceiling in the garage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So it just gives us more usable space in the attic area. And that would drop those dormers down on the visual on the side wall, but it's still going to go to the ridge. Okay. So um, what I'll do is I, um, um, after I take public comment, I'll add a condition that you work with uh, Planner Bisla to modify the dormer design. So you're, you're not committed to this exact solution. But if you think of it, another way to make um, the dormers, okay. yeah, more compatible. Okay, thank you. Did you have any other comments or? No. Okay. So um, I'm gonna open up the public comment. If you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close the public comment. Senator um, Beasley, I'd like to add a condition that um, the applicant, um, provide an alternative uh, roof design that um, allows the dormers to be more, um, I think of the word. Discreet? Yeah. <laughs> um, more in balance in terms of massing um, and in keeping with the Tudor style. Do you find that acceptable? Yes. Okay. I can run okay. okay. And this will be done at building permit submittal. So I'll review the building from the plans when, um, you, when you submit for building for submittal. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, that would allow the dormers 
to be better balanced with the, the roof and also better convey the Tudor style. And with that added condition, um, I can make the findings and approve um, uh, landmark alteration for Somerville Garage and remodel at 522 Orchard Street, file number LMA 23-006. Please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed at the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision, pursuant to zoning section 20-62.030. And for this item, that date is August 12th. Thank you. One question. Yes. Uh, since we've already been in plan check initially, with, can write, we have to wait the 10 days to resubmit these drawings to him, or can we turn them in sooner? You can submit them, but you're, you're at, you're at risk. risk. Yeah. At risk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we can turn them in before the 10 days. Yes. Mm -hmm. At risk. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you. And we're moving on to item 6.3. This is a public meeting for a conditional use permit for a fence for 2003 Bracken Court, file number CUP 23-081 and planner first go to the Senate. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, Zoning Administrator Tomians, and I'm Janet Briscoe. I'm here today to, I'm at home. Sorry about that. Good morning. I'm here today to present to you Bracken Court Fence, located at 2003 Bracken Court, and today is August 1st, 2024. <clears throat> the applicant is proposing an eight foot and eight foot high fence, wood fence that fronts Sovereign's Drive, Bracken Court, and Fountain Grove Parkway. The applicant is requesting an additional height and an alternative design, which requires a modern condition use permit pursuant to Zuni Code Section 2030.06. 60, subsection D. Here's the general plan land use destination, which is low density residential, and that is cons consistent with the zoning land use destination, which is the quintessential plan development of the Fun Grove plan development, which is plan development PD or PD 72001, Resilient City. And here's the neighborhood context. So as you can see, this, this property is right there along Fun Grove Parkway. And here's the site plan. One thing that the site plan doesn't show is that there's a about a three foot high retaining wall, so that holds up the dirt for, for this property, and that's that is not included in the height of the fence. And here's the proposed fence design. As you can see, there's about two feet of lattice and six foot of regular fencing, and in addition to about three foot high retaining wall. And this is a fence that's allowed by right with, uh, according to our zoning code. And here's the view of the fence because the fence is already constructed. This was, um, this use permit is a result of a court enforcement case and that's being resolved right now with this, this condition use permit. And that you can see, you can see the fence from uh, Fun Grove Parkway, and you can, now you can see the fence from Bracken Court. And the, the project has been found in compliance with the California Environment and Quality Act, pursuant to CEQA guidelines section one five three zero three subsection E. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the fence is a small accessory structure. At this time, there are no resolved issues. I did receive a public comment. And I would like to, to read that. Um, so I have to stop sharing my screen. Are we allowed to say the name of the commenter? Or? You can, yeah. So I got this from a neighborhood. I got this from a neighbor within the neighborhood. He's just he's just saying that this fence is not allowed according to their CCNRs and the um, HOA. And yeah, 
Yeah, he, he's just saying, he's just basically giving us um, time sense of when he was in contact with Joe Zamudi, the court enforcement, the court enforcement officer in charge of this case and, and me. And he was just, he was just trying to get Mr. Moody to understand that this, this fence isn't allowed uh, according to the HOA. Mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah, and this, and Mr. Jem wasn't able to make the meeting today. So that's why he sent the email and, and public comment. So, yeah. And if you want to read the full comment, the, the comment set is within a folder. And staff analysis has concluded that all findings can be met. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor condition use permit to allow an eight-foot-high fence wood with an alternative, with an alternative design at 2003 Bracken Court. And that's my contact information if you have any questions. What do you mean by alternative design? Um, I guess just not your regular stick and wood fence. So oh, okay. So this is an alternative design as, as opposed to just a regular plywood. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. And it doesn't seem like the applicant is here. Are they available? I'm assuming. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up to public comment. If you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close the public comments. Um, so I find the fence to be appropriate in that location, given um, the type of road that Fountain Grove Parkway is um, and the need for the homeowner to have privacy in their rear yard areas. Um, I think the alternative design is fairly attractive. It, it, the fence, the, it will stay the way that you showed, okay? Correct. So it's already built, okay. Um, with that, um, I will approve um, fence conditional use permit for 2003 Bracken Court file number CP 23-081 um, as recommended by staff. Um, please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision pursuant to zoning section 20-62.030. And that would be August 12, 2024. And before I move on, um, the city doesn't enforce HOA requirements. So if there are issues with um, property owners not um, abiding by HOA standards, um, that's resolved in, in a civil man manner. So either through enforcement procedures through the HOA or um, through civil proceedings in court. So uh, the city does not um, enforce those um, we only force the code. So, mm -hmm. with that, we will move on to item six point four, exterior update. This is, oh, sorry, yeah, I'm not sure what the file number here is. The R twenty four double zero six. Okay, thank you. And Planner Briscoe again. And this is the post officer model, and this requires a minor design review. And this is located at 1000 Connington Center. And this is right, right not across the street from Connington, from Connington Mall, but it's, it's in the same proximity. The applicant is proposing to remodel the existing facade, including new window and door systems and exterior wall materials, et cetera. And the general plan land use designation is Transit Village Mixed Use, and the zoning land use designation is consistent by being Transit Village and Mixed Use. And this, all, this, this property is also within the North Station Area Specific Plan. And here's a rendering of how the proposed design will look like. And, it actually looks, I did a site, I conducted a site visit and I could, I couldn't distinguish the post office building from the other building. So this is a welcome design. And here's another elevation, well, an elevation of the post design. And here's the neighborhood context. Now you can see Connecticut Mall is, is to the north. 
and that's commercial surround, surrounding this property and that's residential across from this property. And to the, to the east of the property as well. And this project is categorically exempt according to section 15301 because it only involves minor modifications to an existing structure. And at this time, there are no resolved issues unresolved issues and no pub public comments have been received and staff analysis has concluded that all findings can be met. Thus, it is recommended by the, by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor design review to allow a re remodel of the existing post office at 1000 Connection Center. That's my contact information if you have any questions. Thank you, Flanner Briscoe. Is the applicant here and wishing to make a comment? Seeing none, I will close. And is there anyone else in the audience wishing to make a comment on this item? Seeing none, I will close the public comment. Um, this is a welcome change to this building. I don't think it's been remodeled since it was built or constructed originally in probably the 60s, <laughs> 1960s. So it's a welcome uh, change. Um, it would really add a lot to the center, um, really spruce it up. So I'm very um, happy with the design. Um, so I'll be approving, um, I don't have the file number, DR 24-006 for the remodel of the post office at Conning Town Center. Please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision. And for that, um, for this item, that date is August 12th, 2024. And this is the last item. So I will adjourn them.